It's NaNoWriMo Day 21 and I'm really disappointed in Book Outlet. I signed up for early access to their sale. I have my code and the site keeps crashing and I just think that they should have prepared for this. If you know there's gonna be high levels of traffic on your site on this huge sale day that you do every year and you're allowing early access, then you need to be prepared because the site is crashing and I can't even log on to the site to purchase the books that I want, which is really annoying. Okay y'all, now I do have some book mail as well as some friend mail that I would love to share with y'all. Let's see. I haven't opened any of these boxes. Some boxes I received like Monday. It's Wednesday now. This one is Michelle Obama's book, Becoming Michelle Obama. I'm so excited to hold this in my hands. I'm definitely gonna start reading this. ASAP, well, probably closer to the end of November because it's still in the thick of nano and I don't want to get sidetracked even though I have been reading quite a bit recently, hood books. More on the hood books thing later because I was thinking more about like how problematic the genre is and I wanted to talk about that and how much that doesn't take away from my enjoyment of it and how I don't like the term guilty pleasure reading or trash books, but at the same time, I don't mind people utilizing that term, but I don't like that term. I will talk about that in a moment. But Michelle Obama's book, it's beautiful. Don't like this camera angle. Much better. Love it. So that was highly anticipated. That was probably my most highly anticipated release of November, to be honest with you. And then I saw some I'm telling you, this phone stand sucks so much. Don't buy it, people. Don't buy it. Okay, so I saw some bookstagrammer that I follow raving about this book. They did a review, and they were just raving and talking about how great it was. So I'm an impulse buyer, and Amazon Prime plus that buy now with one click thing on Amazon really isn't good for people like me because <laughs> that's exactly what I did. So this is... Oh, I didn't even know I bought the hardback. The Last Namsara by Kristen, oh no, this last name, Sicarelli, Sicarelli, Cicarelli, we'll go with Sicarelli, Kristen Sicarelli, The Last Namsara. This bookstagrammer was literally raving about this book, talking about how much she loved it and enjoyed it and how it was one of her top reads of the year. And like I said, you know, that review coupled with having Amazon Prime and knowing it would get to me in two days, plus that buy now with one click feature on Amazon, is deadly for book lovers, deadly. So I went ahead and one clicked on this. So I believe this is about samurai or something. It says a forbidden love, a kingdom at war, a secret that will change everything. On the back it says, the old stories drew dragons the way jewels drew men. No dragon could resist one told aloud. But the stories didn't just lure dragons, they made them stronger. Telling such stories was forbidden, dangerous, even deadly. But after stalking this dragon through the rocky lowlands for 10 days now, her hunting slaves were out of food. Asha never returned without a kill and she wasn't about to now. She was the Iskari after all, and there were quotas to fill. So she told the story. Ooh, so this is about dragons. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm starting to remember the review. I was intrigued because there aren't a lot of dragon stories been, being written these days. I remember when I was younger, there were quite a few out there in the young adult genre, although the genre wasn't coined young adult when I was growing up. But there were quite a few dragon stories and fantasies out there. So I picked it up because you, you don't really hear about these type of, of stories anymore. In the beginning, there was the Namsara. 
the child of sky and spirit, who carried love and laughter wherever he went. But there is light. But where there is light, there must be darkness. And so there was also the Iskari, the child of blood and moonlight, the destroyer, the death bringer. These are the legends that Asha, daughter of the king of Fergard, has grown up hearing in hushed whispers. Forbidden though the ancient stories may be, she has always felt a connection to the familiar figures of the past and to the teachings of the old one. But it isn't until she becomes the fiercest, most feared dragon slayer in the land that she takes on the role of the, nest, the next Iskari, a lonely destiny that leaves her feeling more like a weapon than a girl. Asha's secret stories have a strange and poisonous power, and even uttering them out loud will draw the deadliest of dragons out of hiding. She conquers each one and brings its head to the king, but no kill can free her from the shackles that await at home, her betrothal to the cruel commandant, a man who holds the power about a man who holds the power about her nature in his palm. All Asha wants is to escape her tragic past and evade her bleak future. When she's offered the chance to gain her freedom in exchange for the life of the most powerful dragon of Fearguard, she takes it, but soon finds there may be more truth to the ancient stories than she ever could have expected. With the help of a secret friend, a slave boy, her betrothed house, a slave boy from her betrothed's household, Asha must shed the layers of her iskari bondage and open her heart to love, light, and a truth that has been kept from her. If you made it to the end of that reading, kudos. Use a real one because that was, oh my gosh, I was on the struggle bus for real reading that. So those are the two books. And then on to the friend mail that I received. One of my best friends, Ananda, who I was also in her wedding a few weekends ago, which you guys saw in the vlogs, sent me a package for my birthday. My birthday's coming up next Friday, actually. And also, just, I think, like, Christmas, too. Christmas slash birthday box. I left my bridesmaids cup. She um, got these for all the bridesmaids and all the girls that came to her bachelorette party. I left it there, so she sent it to me, and then she included some goodies. Ooh. Let's see what's in here. I should have thought to bring some scissors, but I didn't. Okay, so. Oh, this is pretty. What's this? Oh, like sands through the hourglass. These are the days of our lives. This is really cute. I think it's a wedding favor. Yeah, it's a wedding favor from the wedding. Just like thank you gift. Or yeah, thank you gift, not a wedding favor for being part of her big day. Oh, this is cute. This says merry and bright. What is this? Sugar frosting scented bath salts by Simple Pleasures. Super cute. I don't really take baths. But I can use this during, I give myself at-home pedicures, so I can use that in my pedicure water. Ooh, more simple pleasures, merry and bright vanilla and coconut scented face wipes with aloe. I love these little type of like sample sized, like you see how big it is? I don't know, pocket sized, I guess, face wipes. And, Cause you can just throw it in your bag and it comes in so handy, especially during like that time of the month. And also especially, especially also during this time of year because you know, you get runny nose and things like that. So, and oh my God, she is the cutest. She got me a Starbucks gift card, which is so sweet of her because she knows that I am addicted to Starbucks, which I am. It's, it's, it's tough, but that's, it's okay. I've accepted it and I'm okay with it. And, oh my God, I'm so hyped right now. So hyped. I have to put this in my wallet ASAP. I cannot lose this. And then last but not least in here, this is, oh, this is cute, 2019 mini calendar. See how cute it is? I don't know where I'm going to put this. Super cute though. 
Thanks, Nanda. I love you. My bestie. Love you to death. So, yeah. Um, okay, so now I wanted to talk more about, like, the hood books that I've been reading. And I know a lot of different types of people watch my channel. I know that you guys all have different types of reading tastes. Um, the books I read are really varied, but for the past few years, I've been reading primarily new adult books. I ventured into new genres like erotica, and I've been reading more adult fiction than my teenage years. So I, I love young adult fiction, but I don't read it a lot, as you guys may have noticed. I own a lot, a ton, but I'm not always in the mood for it. Um, so I've been reading primarily on my Kindle, new adult, and now this year i went into this year if you've caught some of my earlier videos so determined right to break out of the new adult bubble and to be to be honest i had gotten really tired of reading new adult now towards the end of last year is when i discovered all the great fiction books out there um primarily romance books with black male and female protagonists um i don't know if you want to call them african-american fiction whatever you want to call it um you know, and then there's a subset urban fiction, which has the hood books, as I call it. But, you know, it's so much bigger than that. Like, I discovered so many amazing authors, mostly contemporary, but some fantasy and some... Mm, did I see any science fiction? One science fiction I read. Mostly contemporary. And a lot of them were, like, new adult-ish, too, but with black protagonists. So that was towards, like, the latter half of last year, and I was so hype about that. So if you watch my favorites of 2017 video, you'll see like some of those books sprinkled in. But I didn't start the year off that way. But last year I had a TBR jar and I was so determined to read like more serious books, serious reading, more, you know, books that people, I guess, would consider you to be like smart if you're reading it or, or intellectual or interesting. Um, you know, books that are critically acclaimed and books that others have loved and raved about, books that have made other people's favorites lists, so forth and so on, books that have won awards. Like, a part of me, yes, wanted to push the boundaries and get back into reading adult fiction and nonfiction, but another part of me just wanted to bring some new viewership to this channel, to kind of break out of the young adult bubble on this channel, to become a more interesting reader, a more balanced and well-rounded reader so forth and so on the thing is the tbr jar did not work out for me um i feel bad because i made a lot of those tbr jar videos and i <laughs> oh my gosh i went through the whole thing of like picking the like i think i have it over here in the corner forgotten i wrote all the names down of all the books and put them in the jar and i would pick like four to ten you know a range out of this jar every month i think i did it up until like april or may and then i gave up because it wasn't working and i was tired of deceiving myself and deceiving you guys because you guys started asking for wrap-ups and i hadn't read the books and that's the thing even like the video i made top 10 books i want to read in 2018 haven't read any of those books like it never happened and it was a mixture of me being in a tremendous reading slump slash me really being focused on my writing in this year slash me being like completely infatuated with hood books and that being all I wanted to read. That and other books featuring black characters and black protagonists and just black people, you know? And I just, I grew tired of like pretending that I was actually following through with this. So I stopped making these videos and I even said, like, before I started with the whole TBR jar thing, like, TBRs don't work for me. I, I'm such a mood reader. I have try and I try and I try ever since I started this channel. I think I followed through with a TBR at the very beginning of this channel when I still had that zest and zeal and excitement of being new on BookTube. And I was still trying to gain an audience and gain viewership. I would stick to my TBRs because there was this pressure, like, you need to read all these books so you can do this wrap-ups because wrap-ups get views. Like, if you go back to the beginning of my channel, you'll see a lot of wrap-ups and you'll see a lot of hauls, a ton of hauls, because that's what was getting views and I was trying to build an audience. Well, I just want to be honest, and that's why I'm fitting this in this nano vlog because, not to be rude, but it's like my true diehard subscribers watch these vlogs. And so you guys are really the ones that I want to talk to about this topic. Everyone else 
probably won't find out because I don't I'm not gonna make a major main channel video about this at least not right now not to my knowledge who knows I might change my mind tomorrow happens every day happens all the time with me but anywho's um I say all that to say that this year's wrap up is gonna I'm a little hesitant to make it because no one talks about urban fiction on booktube at least that I've seen and the genre can be very controversial not just because it features like one subset of society right black american um the black american population that lives in the hood and it glamorizes glamorizes drug culture it glamorizes um that type of lifestyle a lot of the characters have gone to prison or in and out of jail, are drug dealers, have drug empires, um, do really moralistically negative things to get by. It's all about get money, get rich. Um, it's all about the money. You know, these characters are very materialistic, you know, a lot of name drop dropping of brands, and it's all tied to this urban culture, right? And I am completely infatuated with these books. I find the character development in these books to be amazing. I find the characters to, in these books to be very interested and interesting and varied. I find the storylines to be, while formulaic for some authors, like I've found certain authors that I've really fallen in love with and so their stories become formulaic and you can see the formula, just like with any other author that writes in any other genre, right? Very few authors do not conform to some type of formula, but the plots are really interesting and very, very unique to that, this specific genre, unlike any other genre that I've read. And the storylines are very dynamic, often unpredictable, which is what drew me to the genre in the first place. And like I said, I read a lot of these books when I was in high school, and then I stopped. And I've recently gotten back into them because they're all over... Amazon, you know, these indie authors and even some smaller publishing houses are pumping these books out. A lot of these authors are incredibly talented. Their writing game is amazing, right? And they're in a genre where they're probably looked down upon or they're seen as not as serious. Oh, you're not a serious writer. You're not a serious author because you're writing these, these types of books, these types of books, trash books, this trash genre, right? And it's a guilty pleasure. Oh, I'm reading this. My guilty pleasure reading. So it just strikes me as disingenuous of me to approach this video or this topic in that manner because I'm genuinely really enjoying this genre. I find a lot of these authors to be very talented, as I've said before. And it's very problematic. I'm not going to shy away from the problematic, um, the problematic issues right at hand you know, the glamorization of certain lifestyles that are not beneficial to most people. I don't know the age groups that's reading these books. I mean, I, I hope it's not young, impressionable teenage girls, but I was a young, impressionable teenage girl reading these books. But the culture portrayed in these books is so far from my own that I saw it purely as fiction and I enjoyed it as such. I am well aware that there are people out there who live this lifestyle or have grown up in this and or have grown up in this environment and so they are able to relate to these stories a lot more than I can. I'm coming at it as purely entertainment and it's a fic you know a fictional value to me whereas someone else can really be relating to these books on a core deep level where I can't, you know. So, I don't know if I'm making sense. I feel like I'm rambling, but I'm basically just trying to say that I understand that the genre is problematic and glorifies and glamorizes certain lifestyles that is probably not the best in terms of reality you know it's not what you want to pattern your life after but this is fiction and as long as you know you're not a young impressionable young person who is taking this stuff as face value and making this the building block of your moral code then you take it for what it is, which is a damn good story that is well written and takes you on a roller coaster ride where you're not quite sure what's going to happen, 
with writers who are not afraid to kill off their characters, who are not afraid to villainize their characters, who are not afraid to humanize their characters and allow their characters to make major mistakes and come back from those mistakes. So all in all, I would love to make a favorites video for you guys. Just know what it's going to entail and be okay with that. If not, you don't have to watch it. Maybe it'll introduce you to a new genre. Maybe it'll open your eyes to a new new type of reading experience. I'm not sure. But these books are very addictive and they are very consumptive. It's like fast food reading, like McDonald's. It's like the McDonald's of reading. <sighs> but if McDonald's had like used real ingredients, right? And it wasn't all full of chemicals and trans fats. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, Whew. I hope I articulated myself properly because I feel like I didn't, but I hope you guys understood what I was trying to say. If any of you else read these type of books, definitely communicate with me down in the um, comments and we can chat and exchange some of our favorite authors. I'm always looking for new authors to discover. And yeah, I will catch up with you guys later. I probably will not get any writing in today. I haven't written at all today. This is the first day, no, the third or fourth NaNoWriMo day where I haven't written anything. But then again, it's, it's still early on. It's only like five something. So we'll see. You'll see in this vlog if I do write anything. I've got a few more unboxings to do. I got one more book mail package thingy in the mail today that I just found out about and then my book of the month box for freaking November arrived ages ago, weeks ago, and I never un opened it, which story of my life. I get packages and never open them for like weeks. And then I did an unboxing or I'm doing an unboxing of this facial brush. Um, this, <sighs> you guys are gonna die. I bought this a year ago, guys, a complete year ago. And I just opened it today. Um, to be fair, I've been using the Vanity Planet Skin for Perfect Spin for Perfect Skin Brush. You've probably seen it all over social media, all those little Instagram model-y people and ex-bachelorette and bachelor contestants love to advertise that brush. I bit the bullet in 2015 or 16, bought the brush, never used it for like a year, finally started using it in 26, end of 2016. All throughout 2017, my skin was amazing. It was so great. And then I stopped using it for about eight months this year and I regretted it. Um, and the reason I stopped using it was because my brush heads got old and I couldn't find new brush heads, long story short. So I en ended up ordering new brush heads like last month from the Vanity Planet website. Started using my um, Spin for Perfect Skin again. My skin cleared up, started to look great. And then the freaking brush died and I thought it was the batteries. And I'm still not 100% sure if the brush is broken or if it was the batteries because I dropped the brush that morning and I came home and I tried to use it that evening and it wasn't turning on. So I'd never changed the batteries the whole like year that I've been using it collectively, like year and some change on and off. You know, I took that break. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's the batteries. So I went out shopping on Sunday, this past Sunday, and I was gonna get batteries, but of course, I didn't. I bought everything else though. So then I remembered, I was like, oh, I don't know when next I'm gonna have a chance to go out and get batteries, X, Y, Z, because I don't have a car right now, so I've been Ubering everywhere, so I don't really like to drive. Like, I don't like to just, I have to plan my outing strategically, basically is what I'm trying to say because normally I use like one of my parents' vehicles, but like I said, I usually have to Uber, so I just am very strategic because Uber costs money. So then I remembered that I had this, ooh, I just hit myself in the face, that I had this baby laying around that I bought freaking a year ago on a whim. I bought it on a complete whim because I was researching more facial brushes and I ran across this, it had decent reviews and I liked the fact that it was, it didn't use batteries and that you just plug it in to charge it. So I literally just purchased it on a whim and then just never used it. And then I misplaced it and I couldn't find it for the longest time. So I had an epiphany and I all just like all of a sudden remembered where it was. So I found it, long story short, I opened it today because 
my spin for perfect spin brush is out of commission due to either the battery issue or oh, i hope it's not really dead after dropping it so i opened this today and it's charging in the corner let me show you here it is charging peacefully i plugged it in and i will let you guys know how it goes it comes with three brushes the brush that's on it now, I believe this is just the normal brush, and then it comes with a sensitive brush head and then an exfoliating brush head. Let me show you what the box looks like inside. Pretty, right? It's like aesthetically really nice. It's aesthetically a lot but pleasing, more pleasing than the Spin for Perfect Spin, and I cannot open this box with one hand, so one second. For those of you that absolutely have no interest in skincare, then this will definitely be boring as hell to you, but I love shit like this. This is what the box looks like. So that's where the brush was. This is where the charging base was. This is where the charger was. And then as you can see, that is the sensitive brush head and this is the exfoliating brush head. And then on the box, it actually tells you um, on the side of the box what it came with. So it comes with the normal brush head, which is on the brush sensitive brush head which I, sh I showed you and then actually it's not exfoliating it's a body brush which is interesting i guess you can use it on your body i won't but it's fascinating but um it's interesting the way i got into these facial brushes i use them because they really do clean your face a lot better than your hands um a lot better than your hands and i've noticed a huge difference in my skin since i started using them i first started using facial brushes back in 2013 and I got like those little brushes that you can get from like the dollar store and they're just like they're about yay high and it's just like a, a, a facial brush it's like a plastic handle with the bristles it's, it's a manual brush and I and I would use it to wash my face and I noticed a huge difference in my skin my pores seemed to tighten up and almost disappear the surface of my skin was so smooth the quality of my skin was so much better um, just everything, you know, my, my dark spots cleared up, just my skin was just a lot smoother and appeared a lot better. So I wanted to invest in a more durable brush and I didn't want to break the bank by getting a Clarisonic because even though I could probably afford a Clarisonic and be okay, just paying that much money, like two to $300 for a skin device is just not something that I'm willing to do when I can find other alternatives that are just as good if not better that's my thing so that's when I jumped on the spin for perfect skin bandwagon and now I will be using this so if anyone's interested to know how this works out I will definitely update you if you're not interested at all don't worry I will move on <laughs> to the books and I have my dinner here my pizza so it's kind of like a mukbang type situation Okay. First off, the package I got today. This is another impulse, one click, I have Amazon Prime buy type thing. This is a book that I read years ago, and I've been wanting to reread it because, okay, this is how I came to buy this book. I'm thinking of a video that I want to film which is going to be my favorite holiday reads. So I've been going through my Goodreads books I've read shelf to kind of like jog my memory. Also, I did a video like this the first year I had my channel. It's like during NaNoWriMo time or like right after NaNoWriMo time. I've since privated that video. So I was rewatching that video and I ran across the fact that I mentioned Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And then I started thinking about other Little Women books and how even though I'm obsessed with Little Women and it's like my favorite book of all time to this day, how I haven't read the rest of Louisa May Alcott's books and how odd that is for me because usually when I find a book that I like, especially a book that I love, I go and I binge read that author. Then, it remind, then I started thinking about the Louisa May Alcott books I have read and the ones that I absolutely adore and read only once when I was a kid and adored and but don't own anymore for whatever reason. Long story short, there was a book called Eight Cousins. It was like 
eight cousins and the, on the aunt hill um but now it's just it just goes by eight cousins and it was about the, this young girl who lost her parents and she went off to live with like um all of these aunts and they had all these she had all these boy cousins and she was the only girl it was such a cute story and it was just like her experiences like getting over the grief of the loss of her parents and like living in this meeting all these new family members and dealing with all these boy cousins and she's this girl then there was a sequel and it was called rose and bloom and it's like she's all grown up and she's being courted and i guess she has a lot of money and she's trying to figure out who loves her for herself and her money blah 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 anyways i wanted to read the sequel so i bought it because <laughs> i don't own it anymore i don't know what happened to my copy from when i was a kid but this is Rose in Bloom. I'm probably going to start reading this tonight because I was feeling really nostalgic and wanting to read this. And holding this, literally, I'm I'm literally about to start reading this, guys. Just holding it just is making me want to read it so bad. Have you ever had that? Especially if you're a mood reader, you know what I'm talking about. When you start talking about a book and you pick it up and just holding it, you're like, oh my god, I need to start reading this right now. That's kind of how I feel right now. And also, I love paperbacks. I own more hardbacks than paperbacks because I pre-order books and I like to buy books right when they come out and I'm not patient enough to wait for the paperback. And unlike in the UK, America only comes out with hardbacks of books for the most part. Well, adult books, they usually come out with paperback. But in America, they come out with hardback and then they make you wait forever for the damn paperback to come out and it's not okay. <laughs> and I love paperback. We gotta, I'm gonna do a video, hardback versus paperback. It's gonna be like a great debate. Thumbs up this video if you want to see me rant about that. But yes, Rose and Bloom. I'm about to start reading this. And then my Book of the Month box that came literally like 5 million weeks ago and I never opened because that's who I am. I think you guys are seeing that about me. I'm getting so close in these vlogs, guys. I'm loving it. Recoming besties. <laughs> besties. I look a hot mess love it oh meanwhile my pizza's getting cold so I'm running my mouth mm. that's good pizza if you haven't tried blaze pizza and there's one near you you'll thank me later mmm I always come so wrapped, and it reminds me of saran, saran wrap. And I'm like, why do they gotta do all this, you know? It's unnecessary. I only gotta saran wrap these books like this. I can't remember what book I chose. Probably the romance. That's the thing, is there's, there's a whole list of books, and a romance book is one of the options. Very rarely can I resist not picking a romance read. That's just who I am in my soul. And I've just come to accept it as I've gotten older. Another nifty little bookmark. I have like five million of these now. A book is a heart that only beats in the chest of another. Rebecca Solnit. Cool. I'm going to think of something creative and DIY to do with these bookmarks because they're really plain just the way they are. So, hmm. I might have to watch some YouTube videos to get some ideas. Ooh, this I like. This is Gorge. Look at this. What is this? Oh, give a gift, get a gift. Get a free add-on next month when you buy a gift today. That's so cute. I like the packaging. The message I don't too much care for. But the packaging is life. Okay. This is the book I chose for November, The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory. I've been hearing a lot about Jasmine Guillory, about Jasmine Guillory lately, and I've been seeing her books everywhere. So when I saw this one, I definitely wanted to pick it up and start reading her books and see how I feel about her as an author. This one says, not everyone wants one. And I love that the character is a woman of color. That's also something that drew me to the book. And Jasmine Guillory, the author, is a woman of color. I was looking to see if I could see her picture in the dust jacket. It's not there. It's in the back. Here she is. She is so cute. Jasmine Guillory is a graduate of Wellesley College and Stanford Law School. Okay, girl. 
She is a Bay Area native who lives in Oakland, California. She has towering stacks of books in her living room, a cake recipe for every occasion, and upwards of 50 lipsticks. Damn, a woman after my own heart. We could be best friends. Visit her online at her website. Okay, I'm going to do something that I'm kind of starting to fall in love with, which is reading the dust jacket, and then I'm going to read a few pages to you guys because I want to hang out a little bit more. So sue me. When someone asks you to spend your life with him, it shouldn't come as a surprise or happen in front of 45,000 people. Yeah, how do you guys feel about that? Us women out there, would you be angry if your significant other proposed to you in a large crowd in front of a ton of people? I have mixed feelings about it because I'm such an introvert that I think that a private proposal would be really romantic and would definitely be more comfortable, but I'm also strangely an exhibitionist. I mean, I was an actress for years and I love being on stage and there's something about the attention that having my significant other propose to me in a public place wouldn't really piss me off. Like there's something very romantic about that too and having everyone like join in in our joy and, and share our moment and be happy for us. As long as that person is actually someone you want to marry and you've discussed marriage as well, then <laughs> sounds like this wasn't the situation here though. When freelance writer Nicole Patterson goes to a Dodgers game with her actor boyfriend, his man bun, and his bros, the last thing she expects is a scoreboard proposal. Saying no isn't the hard part. They've been dating for only five months and he can't even spell her name correctly. Yeah, that's not a good sign. The hard part is having to face a stadium full of disappointed fans. At the game with his sister, Carlos Abera comes to, Nick's rex comes to Nick's rescue and rushes her away from a camera crew. He's even there for her when the video goes viral and Nick's social media blows up in a bad way. Nick knows that in the wilds of LA, a handsome doctor like Carlos can't be looking for anything serious. So she embarks on an epic rebound with him filled with food, fun, and fantastic sex. But when their glorified hookups start breaking the rules, one of them has to be smart enough to put on the brakes. I'm loving this. We have just protagonists of color. It looks like she is, she looks like a black woman or an African-American woman and he looks like a Hispanic man, so, or Latino man. So I'm loving this. Let's read a few pages. To my dad, Paul Guillory, you have always believed in me. Thanks for raising me to believe in myself. So sweet. Chapter one, Nick Patterson looked around at the perfect Los Angeles day. Clear blue sky, bright green baseball field, warm sun shining down on the thousands of people with her at Dodger Stadium. There was only one thought on her mind. When can I get out of here? Fisher was next to her, his blonde man bun golden in the sun, laughing as he drank warm beer to celebrate his birthday. He and his buddies were talking about lifting or their latest auditions, or their upcoming car purchases, all of the things his friends always talked about, all of the things Nick couldn't care less about. If she'd known this birthday outing was going to include a bunch of Fisher's friends, she would have at least gotten one of her girlfriends to come along so she could have had someone to talk to. Although to be fair, it was possible Fisher had told her his friends were coming and she hadn't been paying attention. She tended not to pay that much attention when Fisher talked, but then she hadn't been dating him for the past five months for his conversational skills. Nick looked up at the scoreboard inside. It was still only the fifth inning. She probably had at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half more of this. She didn't have anything against baseball, exactly. It was just that she'd rather be spending this beautiful spring day at home with her laptop and a glass of bourbon on the rocks than outside at a baseball stadium with a warm beer. But when the hot dude you were sleeping with wanted to go to a Dodgers game for his birthday, you sucked it up and went along with him and his bros. She sighed again and reached for her phone. Maybe she could get some work done as she sat there. Just as she was starting to make some actual progress on a draft of an article, Fisher nudged her hard. Nick, put your phone down, you can't miss this. He threw his arm around her and kissed her on the cheek. She pressed save and tucked her phone back in her pocket. His favorite baseball player must be coming up to bat or something. She looked down at the field, but nothing was going on there. She followed Fisher's pointed finger and looked up at the scoreboard just in time to see on the screen. Nicole, I love you. Will you marry me? Fisher, 
She turned to Fisher, her mouth wide open. What the hell is going on? To her horror, he dropped down to one knee on top of the peanut shells that carpeted the concrete, dangerously close to the puddle of spilled beer. Oh God, he had a ring box in his hand. Nicole, he tucked a strand of hair behind his ear and opened the ring box. She averted her eyes. Will you make me the happiest man in the world? We'll stop there. <laughs> Good times. All right, so two more books. It's book buying season, guys. This happens every year, like starting around October through December. I buy a shit ton of books. I don't know what it is. I think it's like the holidays with my birthday, with like Black Friday sale on Book Outlet. It's just all the things. And then Christmas, oh my gosh. Yes, lots of books will be added to my collection. Trust. was the night before Thanksgiving. <laughs> so reading a few pages of Rose and Bloom, which it's interesting getting back into that old classical style of language and how it was tripping me up because it's been so long since I read a classic and it made me realize that I'm out of practice and my brain is out of practice with that style of writing, the vocabulary used, the sentence structure, just the vernacular of the way the language flowed back then with the writing and that made me sad and I was like I need to stay with it and read more classics throughout the year so that it's just exercises that part of my brain that reads classics easily like when I was a kid I used to zip through them because I was used to reading them anyways I say all that to say that that put me in the mood to watch a classic film like an old-timey film which some of my favorites are classic films. So I'm on Amazon Prime right now trying to find a classic film to watch. And I don't know. Part of me wants to watch like a Katherine Hepburn movie or should I find a Christmas movie? Like an old Christmas movie. Hmm. I'll keep you guys posted. 